This statement may come as a bit of a shock to you, but I'm just going to say it anyway. The most famous and successful violinists you know deserve their fame and success. A scandalous proposition, to be sure, but sometimes I feel we get the idea that there's some kind of shadowy cabal, the viol illuminati, as it were, that's determining that one of two equally talented violinists will have a more successful career than the other. And while something like that cabal very well may exist, for example, Google what Isaac Stern did to Aaron Rosen. The fact remains that those who are at the top billing of the violin world would not be where they are if they weren't actually that good. Hilary Hahn being more successful than her also brilliant classmate Leila Josefowicz wasn't an accident, and it wasn't due to any kind of nefarious backroom dealings. This also isn't to say that there aren't some very deserving violinists that unfortunately slip through the cracks. So today I would like to introduce you to five of my favorite violinists that you likely have never heard of, and quite frankly, it's a darn shame. I'm Tobias Murphy, and this is Murphy Music Academy. So to start, number five on our list is Vladimir Dayo. Now, I first started seeing Vladimir's videos pop up on my YouTube feed about a year ago, and at first, I just thought he was some violin enthusiast because most of his videos were just side-by-side -side comparisons of different violinist technique. So he put like Heifetz's hand next to Milstein's hand performing a very similar technique so you could see the comparison between how they would execute it. And it's a really cool idea and I was really enjoying watching those videos, but I didn't know until a few weeks after discovering his channel that Mr. Dio is also himself a brilliant violinist. <laughs> He likes to specialize in sort of the older, more what we call bel canto style of violin playing, exemplified by players such as Heifetz. And it really is just a shame that you've never heard of him, and I'd never heard of him until like a year ago. Now, he is from Kazakhstan, but I believe he lives in the United States, and like me, I think he also has his own music academy. So if you're looking to bring your violin playing to the next level, you should probably check him out. After, of course, checking out Murphy Music Academy, because I'm not quite sure if Mr. Dio does online lessons or not. But at the very least, subscribe to his YouTube channel. And by the way, I will put in the description below all of the YouTube channels of the artists I list in this video, if they have one. So now, on to number four, Lilia Heighton. Hayton, Heitonen, Hayton. How do you pronounce her last name? Hayton. Hayton. Okay, so when I say it like that, I kind of sound like I'm in a pasta commercial, so I'm just gonna say Haytonen. But if there are any Swomi speakers in my audience, uh, please enlighten me on how to pronounce her last name. So for those of you who actually watched the entirety of my video on Karolina Pertsenko, but judging by the comments, a lot of you didn't, then you would already have been introduced to this brilliant young violinist. I only discovered her about three weeks ago, and I'm a little upset about that, as I think she is one of the most brilliant young violinists we've seen for a long time. Just compare this video of her playing a Mozart concerto in a competition with the now super famous Chloe Chua also playing a Mozart concerto in a competition at around the same age. <laughs>
course, Chloe is much older now and much more matured and more experienced. So this comparison is for this video only. I'm obviously not taking a shot at Chloe here. But if you just compare the overall comfort, sound quality, musical maturity, stage presence, and just pure joy that Lilia exudes in this performance, it's, well, nothing short of mind-blowing. And while it's definitely true that those that get big careers deserve them, unfortunately, it's not always necessarily true that someone of her talent at her age will get the career she deserves. There is an X factor to all of this. For instance, you really think that Chloe Chua would be as famous as she is if it wasn't for two sets. Maybe? But I kind of doubt it. Now, obviously, I don't have anywhere near the influence of Brett or Eddie, but if I can just do a little something with the small platform I have to push Lilia into the limelight, then I think I will have done something good with it. Now, speaking of super talented prodigies that did not get the careers they deserved, we are going on to our third entry in this list, Boris Goldstein. Boris is the only posthumous entry on this list, but he still, even in death, has not gotten the recognition he deserves as a violinist. Now, you may have been introduced to Boris Goldstein briefly if you watch the PBS documentary The Art of the Violin. By the way, if you haven't seen that documentary, and this is not a suggestion, it's an order, go watch it. The whole thing's on YouTube, and it's what inspired me to become a violinist. But back to Goldstein. No less than Yasha Heifetz himself said that Boris Goldstein was the most talented violinist in the USSR. And yet, while he did perform and certainly had something of a career, he was completely overshadowed by the likes of David Oistrakh and Leonid Kogan, and never really got the recognition that he deserved. So hopefully you can go fix that and listen to the few but brilliant recordings he does have. Now, to the penultimate violinist on this list, number two, Antal Zalai. <laughs> Mr. Zalai is a Hungarian Roma violinist who I was first introduced to at the Cleveland Institute of Music when I was a student there, and they were doing a massive live stream of the finals for the International Violin Competition of Indianapolis, where Mr. Zalai placed fifth. <laughs> And if any of you were thinking, oh, he only won fifth place, do you have any idea just how much of an honor it is to even just be a contestant in the international violin competition of Indianapolis, let alone place at all? And since then, he's accumulated a massive library of performances on his YouTube channel. I don't know if he just can't get a record deal or something, but his loss, I guess, is our gain because he now has a public archive of performances, many of them live, of just about every piece in the major repertoire and a lot of pieces that aren't in the major repertoire. The Brahms Concerto. Heinrich Wilhelm Ernst Othello Fantasy. All 24 Paganini Caprices in one long video. Like the absolute mastery that Antal Zalai has over such a broad swath of repertoire is just stunning. All of the performances are brilliant and beautiful, and he probably has the gnarliest at staccato I think I've ever seen. I don't know why he's not more well known. Maybe if he was wearing the cool goatee and mustache, he'd do a little bit better. Anyway, his channel is currently smaller than mine, so go fix that. 
So now for the final number one violinist that you have sadly never heard of, and is actually the one that inspired me to make this video, Christine Bolanus. <laughs> So Miss Bolanus actually comes from a very musical family. She has a sister who is a wonderful cellist, a brother who is also a very good violinist, and made this really cool cover of Billie Eilish's Bad Guy. But what I love so much about Christine Bolanus' playing is that it's an exemplar of what I would call solid violin. A type of playing where the violinist so obviously and carefully constructs in places every aspect of every single note. It's not a very flashy approach, but it actually takes a lot more technical control to play this way. For an example of flashy versus solid violin playing, let's compare Miss Bolanus with players like Ruggiero Ricci or Giuseppe Giaboni. <laughs> What you find in their playing is a lot of facility, a lot of brilliance, but Many of the finer details of the music are sacrificed on the altar of violinistic fireworks. And I'm not saying that that is necessarily a wrong approach. My wife and I went to go see Giuseppe Giaboni perform with the Detroit Symphony last year, playing the first Paganini Concerto, and he brought the house down. But as a violinist, I find somebody like Christine Bolanus a lot more interesting and even more technically accomplished. For instance, watch this video of her playing the infamous cadenza from Pietro Locatelli's Violin Concerto, the harmonic labyrinth. I've actually never heard anyone play that section with that level of clarity and accuracy. Here's Chloe Chua. And Ilya Gringoltz. Both of them are brilliant violinists, but you can tell they kind of just gave up on making that section sound clean, clear, and in tune. But somehow, Christine does it. Anyway, a very different video than what I usually make, and my violin's just a prop today, but I promise I will be getting back to making videos on violin technique here in the near future. But in the meantime, go blow up these guys' channels in YouTube views. And if there's a particular violinist that should be on this list that you think I missed, please put their names down in the comments. I've been Tobias Murphy for Murphy Music Academy, always here to remind you there is no pleasure in mediocrity. Happy practicing, and I'll see you next time.